Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Friday Charge from the EV Geek Podcast. We're your hosts, Joel and Sebastian. And today, October 4th, we've got a handful of topics on the docket, with our biggest being the sudden exit of a major charging hardware vendor. So without further ado, let's plug in and get started. All right, so we've got less topics today than usual, but that's because this first topic is a big one, and I figured it would take a while to get through. So our first topic is Enel X, or Enel X, however you say it, has decided to pull out of the U.S. market completely. So Enel X, manufacturer of DC fast charge hardware, as well as the popular juice box line of level two chargers, announced Wednesday, October 2nd, that they are exiting the North American market effective October 11th, 2024. In their statement, in their statement, they announced that residential hardware will continue to physically function. However, any app support or smart abilities will be discontinued. So, because they're discontinuing all their software, that means any commercial hardware will also cease to function due to the lack of software communication. And then they're removing the apps from public-facing app stores as well. They're also completely discontinuing customer support effective immediately. So warranties, need help, had an active case with them. Tough luck. The full implication of this isn't 100% known yet, but it doesn't, it doesn't sound pretty. Um, just, you know, like I said before, DC fast chargers manufactured or installed by them will essentially be bricks once their communication stops, unless station operators are able to quickly work to migrate to other uh, charging platforms that are OCPP compliant, and the hardware has to be compliant as well. Um, one example of this is uh, Charge Lab, a kind of major player in the game, has announced, you know, hey, we're willing to help, you know, work and figure out what to do with these units, but you only have a certain amount of time, you know, otherwise... They're just going to be bricks, right? Um, which sucks for public infrastructure. Home chargers that are currently using schedules or custom charge lim- or charge limits, you know, whatever that were configured through the app, won't be able to be adjusted once the software goes completely offline, which currently the software is online, but it's basically unusable because everybody is now trying to get into their apps or whatever to adjust their chargers and the servers can't handle the load. <laughs> shame, shame, shame. And then also, many vehicle OEMs up until right now have partnered and been white labeling these juice box chargers. So like Honda and Jeep are the two examples I can find that are doing this, like still have it referenced on their website. Those also are going to lose their smart abilities. And <laughs> juice box was a very common choice for many utility companies for to do uh, time of use pro scheduling or energy metering, monitoring, whatever. So, you know, you can get cheaper rates when you charge your cars. Utility companies have no idea what they're going to be able to do with their uh, these programs now, since they won't be able to get data from the chargers either. So yeah, this is this is not as big a news as it should be uh, around that's happening this week. Um, looking around just our city, we have a lot of juice box chargers in our city. I know uh, several restaurants partnered with them to get these installed at their location. I can think of just five, six, or seven just at the top of my head that I've been to personally. Here in our city, we don't have a large city here that are going to be bricks. And these are good locations. These are restaurants. This is the zoo. I mean, I just used one a couple of days ago when I was when I was eating at a restaurant out west. And it was nice to have. And nice thing is you, they had an app, but you really didn't need it. Kind of just plug in charges, pulled up, plugged it in. It didn't have super huge speeds, but it was enough for it to get you a little bit of charge here and there. And it's going to be – and these businesses, you know, dished out a lot of money to get these chargers installed. Several thousands of dollars to, to run the wire and pull up concrete if they had to to get these – charger stalled and a lot of these businesses i don't see are gonna run off the charge lab and say hey come come do this because they probably don't know i mean i mean unless they're unless they're in the end i'm sure they're not getting emails from from you know x saying hey that charger you have in your parking lot is not going to work anymore so essentially they probably don't know about us this this is this is pretty big because these are a major major player. I mean, when I think of level two charging, I think of you know the the old uh, Clipper Creek models, the juice box, and the new charge points, and that's kind of the three major players with level two charges. Unless you talk about Tesla and destination chargers. So, yeah, this this should be bigger news than what it is. And I don't know how they can just say, "Oh, we're done, bye," and just leave and leave people hanging out with these chargers in their 
in their parking lots that they can't use. It's, it's pretty sad. Yeah. And it's an interesting glimpse, too, in kind of seeing how fragile the smart ecosystem really is, right? I mean, they can just announce any random day that they're shutting down effective basically immediately, and mm-hmm. you're left with just a bunch of dumb bricks, you know? Yep. There's no protection for the consumer. There's nope. no... They're just gone. But yeah, that, like you said, especially here in Arkansas, they were a big partner with Entergy for a while when mm-hmm. they would do Entergy adopt a charger sites to install them. Now, most of them were free. You didn't have to do anything, so they should continue to keep functioning. Yep. But that's not the case everywhere. There are plenty of actual commercial u- uses or units or even like fleet operators who will now not have a way to manage or control who has access to the chargers. Yeah, I mean, there's I know. not uh, there's not a great way of knowing what's going to happen to those units if all of a sudden fleet the fleet driver shows up, swipes a card, and there's nothing to communicate to. Does it let them charge? Yep. Does it then you know does it fail fail over and just let them charge, or does it fail over and do nothing? Yeah. And I, and I seriously doubt there's going to be people coming out and like taking these units down. Like I don't see your lo- local business saying, "Hey, come out and take this old unit down." It doesn't work anymore. Um, this is just like another black eye in in charging infrastructure. I mean, this is another one of those critics say, "Hey, you know, you have these chargers everywhere, but they don't work anymore." So it just it just adds fuel to their fire that that kind of limits the, the charging you can do a- around your cities and things like that or hotels. It's just. It's sad. I can see why a lot of people are going to be ticked off about it when they find out, because a lot of these businesses probably don't know about it yet. So, right. Yep. Yep. Sad, sad, sad. All right. Well, moving on, Tesla has discontinued the entry level Model 3 in the U.S. So they have discontinued the standard range rear wheel drive Model 3 for the North America or U.S. market. This vehicle used a LFP pack, but did not qualify for any federal tax rebates. Because of that, the trim has been in a weird position for most of the year because they've released the long-range rear-wheel drive model that was cheaper than the standard-range car after tax credit. And it's also believed that they're discontinuing it because of a new 25% tariff on Chinese-sourced lithium batteries. It is a shame, though, because the LFP pack was an excellent pack if you were buying the car to be a commuter because it's not very temperature sensitive and you can regularly charge it to 100%, etc. You know, they're a little harder wearing or better wearing than the typical NMC packs are. Yeah, I mean, I think this was just, yeah, I think this car was just like an upsell for Tesla. Like they had this car, but hey, go up one more model, you can actually get it cheaper. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I like the LFP packs. You can charge 100%, especially if you need that extra 20%, because you know, on, on the regular NMCs, you charge to 80%. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it lowers, you know, with the tax credit, you, I think it lowered it to, it started at 44, and then you got a $7,500 tax credit. Well, the standard range is 40. So, I mean, yeah. you're, you're right. You're getting, you're getting more car, more range, you know, better performance. And it's three or $4,000 cheaper than the standard range. So I can see Tesla's kind of way of thinking about this. They probably weren't selling a lot of them. Maybe because mm-hmm. people were like, you know, up, you know, upselling to the, uh, to the long range. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a shame to see this go, you know, with the LP battery because those did not qualify for the tax credit. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of people, you know, kind of believe that it'll probably come back, which I hope it does. But with the new 25% tariff on Chinese source lithium batteries, who knows, right? Unless Tesla starts actually building LFP packs here in the U.S., you know, and or getting mater- the minerals or whatnot for the LFP packs. I just, I don't know if we'll see it in the U.S. market again anytime soon. Yep, and there's other manufacturers that still use LFP packs. I believe Mustang Mach E uh, mm-hmm. that we just recently got to drive, they used LFP packs too as well. So we'll see how the how those tariff rates on those LFP packs kind of affect their pricing moving forward as well. Yep. Speaking of Mustang Mach E, Ford this week has announced their what they're calling Power Promise. So starting October 1st, new retail deliveries of Mach-E, Lightning, and E-Transit will include a Ford Charge Station Pro Level 2 charger, as well as free standard installation. So the Charge Station Pro is the 80 amp unit, and on Lightning, it's the and if you have a Ford Lightning, it's the one that will allow you to do, if you have the hardware on your panel, you can do the bi-directional uh, vehicle-to-home stuff with it. So, I mean... Pretty cool. It's not your just super basic charger. Um, this is also uh, the power promise also includes for 
all Ford EV owners, regardless of purchase date, is now including 24-7 live support, as well as improving roadside assistance that will actually take your vehicle to a charger if you, for some reason, run out of juice. And then, as always, Ford is also packaging in the Blue Oval Charge Network, which is, you know, their ability to do plug and charge on various networks, including Tesla Superchargers, Electrify America, and you can kind of set it all up from if within the vehicle. And this is cool to me. It's kind of one of those new, it's a new incentive, right? So it's cool. I remember though, like GM a couple years ago, he was doing something similar. If you bought a GM EV, they would give you like 750 bucks or something like that towards, or actually, I think it wasn't even that. I think they would just do, if it was what Q Merit determined as a yep. standard install, they would install a 1450 outlet and then give you the unit to plug in mm-hmm. to it. Um, and so it, it's kind of after knowing how that went, uh, the standard installation has to meet a very narrow set of criteria. Otherwise, it won't be free. And I imagine, mm-hmm. you know, the Ford program is probably pretty similar. Now, Ford hasn't, I don't think Ford has said anywhere who their actual installation partner is on this. You know, GM was pretty open and transparent that they were using Q Merit for that. So it does say that they've partnered with Q Merit to provide new okay, electric vehicle Q-Merit. customers. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep. So then I imagine it'll be very similar for what is classified as a standard install versus what is not a standard install. And on the GM program, at least, if it wasn't a standard install, GM would give like $750 towards the install and then you pay the rest, which I don't know. Do you know if Ford has done anything similar with that or are they just saying the free standard? Um, it just says uh, that they're, it's called many professional install service with a star by it. So, you know, there's probably, you know, a star. There's there's a catch. I mean, you probably can't you probably can't still you know install it at an outhouse that's you know 100 yards away from your your meter and things like that. So, uh, right. yeah. But I am I'm excited about this. You know, uh, you're right. Chevy did it. We have our buddy Jason when he bought his Lyric. That actually, came out and actually started the charger in his house. I like this better than giving away free DC fast charging credits. I think this is a much better program. Than, than doing that as well, um, because that keeps people off the DC fast charge, makes them pay for it. Um, and also it, it starts building out the infrastructure at, at homes too, as well, because you get a unit installed and if you move, well, that unit's most likely going to stay there. Uh, so yeah, I love this idea. I hope other manufacturers start doing this instead of giving, you know, three years of complimentary charging mm-hmm. um, and things like that. Uh, so yeah, so looking at the website here, standard installation credit towards installation and permitting, courtesy of Ford. Uh, the facilitation of the fur permitting process and the sourcing and sedging of a top rated certified installers. That's kind of what they're saying. So I'm thinking it's very similar to what, what, what Chevy did as well. Yeah. So I clicked on the star and it says yep. people who purchase from between 10, 1, 2024 and 1, 2, 2025 will be eligible to receive a complimentary Ford charge station pro with complimentary home installation or $2,000 bonus cash. Oh. Yeah, so I'm wondering if you don't get standard installation, if they'll instead give you two grand off the price of a vehicle, which honestly, as someone who already has a home charger. Yeah, I take two. I take two. I'll take the, I'll take the I'll two, take grand. two grand. I'll take the two grand. Let's get that, <laughs> that Mustang Mach-E GT and give me two grand off it. Sure. Why not? So, yeah. So but, great program. Yeah. Great program that gets chargers at in homes and things like that. Is, is is reliable. So, you know, you're not having any issues with that. So, yep. Pretty cool. Love it. Yeah. And like you said, it gets people off the, from sitting at DC fast chargers until 100%, hopefully. Yes. And it help, gets people accustomed to charging at home where it's best to charge because it's cheapest and easiest and everything else. $3 a day for me, 3 or $4 a day for me to charge both my cars. So, yep. 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 All right. What's our All final right, story? Our final story for the week is that Tesla has finally launched full self driving for the Cybertruck. Woohoo! This is where you throw in your clapping sound effect. Oh, that's fun. Let me find it. Let me find it. Dang it, I can't find it. No clapping sound effects. Oh. We'll, just, we'll just do a little Darn. clap ourselves. Yeah. I was on the wrong screen. I got too many screens up, so. So Tesla has made good on their timeline to ship wait FSD. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There we yeah. go. <laughs> Thank you, Tesla. There we go. The clapping sound effects. <laughs> so Tesla has made good on their timeline to ship FSD to the Cybertruck in September, <laughs> releasing the update on September 30th to select customer units and then is slow rolling the update to customer vehicles as we speak. So this update is FSD version 12.5.5 and other improvements on this version is they have finally moved the highway driving stack to their new end-to-end neural net processing. Mm-hmm. 
which is cool stuff. Tesla has acknowledged that there's still some stuff that they would like to improve in future versions for Cybertruck. Mm. Of course, as always, it's going to always need improvements. Yep. But hey, it's good to see that finally all of their customer retail vehicles now have access to this feature, especially since they've been charging for it this whole time that the trucks have been on sale, you know? Yep. Although I guess they're technically not charging for it. They're charging for the foundation <laughs> series that includes it. <laughs> so, yeah, so looking at this article here from Auto Week, it looks like it's only certain populations of Tesla Cybertruck. So is it being pushed out to everyone or just certain individuals? So they, from what I understand, is they have pushed it to a small batch, okay. and they keep pushing it to small batches. Okay, gotcha. So okay. they're not doing kind of a big wide release. They're just doing a slow, which when there's only twenty or 30,000 trucks on the road, that's not too surprising. Yeah. So, yeah, I- I'm glad. I mean... I know a lot of people who own Cybertruck. Not a lot of people, maybe three. Uh, but <laughs> I said a lot of people. I know probably two or three. Hey, that's more than I know. So. Yeah, and I don't know them like that. I know I'm like, hey, how you doing, cool Cybertruck? Um, they were wanting this, and it's kind of been like, hey, when are we getting it? You said we were going to get it, but Tesla told them before October one it was going to happen, and it technically did happen uh, before October one. So yeah, so you know, it's going to be the, of course it's the vision only and things like that. So. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. I'm glad. You know, we just did a recent video where we tried out 12.5.4, um, and it worked great. I mean, we drove yep. it for about three, four miles, no wheel nag, did what it was supposed to do until I accidentally disengaged it because I thought it was going the wrong way when it really wasn't. Uh, but <laughs> besides, it wanted to leave out of a parking lot one way that I didn't know you could leave, and it was like, no, you can't go that way. Technically, actually, it could. So, yeah, but if we didn't have any issues with it, it um, worked flawlessly. It actually drove us around a parking lot. And, uh, until it decided where it wanted to drop us off at. So, yeah. <laughs> so Tesla has come a long way with FSD. Now if they just get, you know, government approval to to roll it out and take a nap in the car, read a book while you do it, that'd be great. I think we're still a little ways we're away from that. a little that. bit away from that, from, from, from popping your seat back and taking a nap while it drives. So, but that, that, that would be cool. So, yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, and it is cool too, you know, to note with Cybertruck, it's vision only. And this is the first system we've actually had to account for like steer by wire and yep. rear wheel stealing and all, steering and all that. Yep. So, I mean, it definitely was somewhat, somewhat of a feat. I still am a little in the camp of they probably could have released it before the trucks hit the market. Mm-hmm. But I can also understand the angle of you put the trucks on the road and you have now a giant base you can get footage from and kind mm-hmm. of driving data from to help fine tune the model. So like I see it both ways. I ultimately yep. don't I don't know that maybe it should have taken this long because they've been delivering to customers for what, ten months now? Yeah, almost a year I was thinking, yep. Yeah. So I yep. mean they've been delivering to customers for a while now. I think maybe it shouldn't have taken this long. But ultimately I get I kind I get both sides of it, you know. Um Yep. It's just glad to see finally out for those who own Tesla Cybertrucks and pay for the FSD. Uh now you can now you can use it and, and have fun with it like the rest of us can. <laughs> All right. Well, that is a wrap for today, Friday, October 4th. Thanks for plugging into the Friday Charge. Be sure to subscribe to the EV Geek Podcast on YouTube and tap the notification icon to be notified about new releases. We have some great content coming up and great content that has just been released, including a look at the F-150 Lightning, the Mach-E GT, and we just released a video with the all-new Model 3 Highland. Came out today. If you have any thoughts, or came out today. Yep. If you have any thoughts or questions, drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. So long, everywhere. So long, everyone. <laughs> we will see you on the next episode of The Friday Charge. See y'all.